Are, do you guys prefer being called strippers or like dancers or like do you have a preference? We prefer the words entertainers because that describes best what we do. We entertain people. Entertain, okay. Yeah. But we're, we're entertaining right now as well. Exactly. So broadly speaking, entertainer. Uh-huh. Okay, so like service level, you'll tell somebody like, yeah, I'm an entertainer. That's what I like Professionally, to use, but I am... Um, I don't get offended when people call me strippers because, you know, that's what people think and that's what we do. So well, there you go. Yeah. Are or there any like I say dancer is probably the most, but I prefer the word entertainer. It's just the funnest word to say with it. I, yeah. I like it. It's a loose word. Mm-hmm. It's a loose word. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Got to go all around the table. Oh, yeah. then. There we go. Cool. Being a professional leader is a very tough lifestyle. Really? As far as just with the weight gain and, and trying to. To keep the weight off. Oh, I could bet, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like when I was doing one or two food challenges a week, that was easy because I would do the food challenges on the weekend, and then I'd have like five days to lose all the weight Absolutely. and just eat lightly. But I'll do eight or nine challenges in a week on my tours. That's crazy. And like some some tours, I've gained like 50 or 60 pounds. In just the summer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, from like yeah May May to August, I would. So that's or, like twenty pounds or, a month. Oh yeah, well even during uh, while I've been in school, uh-huh. I always tell people get a good look at me now after the spring semester, right before the summer starts, and then I'll I'll come back like fifty pounds heavier to start Work the fall it all semester. Off. Yeah, and then over the course of the break, I'll I'll slowly lose the weight. So that's insane. To oh, me. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Most people wouldn't be able to deal with the weight gain and all that. I have some friends who, who think that everybody has like a, a serial killer trait. Mm-hmm. You know, I was told once that mine is that I don't wet my toothbrush before I brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate or not. But. <laughs> it's such a small detail. How do they know that? Are, are these your roommates, I'm assuming? Uh, it, yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, how do they know that about <laughs> you? Maybe they're the serial killers for... Yeah, right. Hey, they're watching me. You don't You don't wet your toothbrush. You're, you're a serial killer. <laughs> how do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. That's funny because uh, I don't think I used to wet my toothbrush years back, mm-hmm. but I you think do in now. the past few years I started doing that. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how habits change like that. Drew. Yeah. And also, totally unconsciously. I will say, I feel like less than a serial, like less of a serial killer now than whenever mm. I was younger. But you there, know, you <laughs> there you go. There you go. I've noticed my lingo over text versus like how I how I speak. Like my dialogue is like different. It's almost like different personas. So like, uh, like I'll, I'll use like different expressions. So like for example. I say like hell yeah all the time. Dude, over I, text. dude yeah, I I'm not saying I'm the same way, but I never really say like hell yeah all the time in person. Like yes, someone, yes. T- someone tells you like a random good thing, you're just like hell yeah, like, hell yeah. Yeah, I know I do the same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, like I, I think you even like you're like I'm on my way. I'm like hell yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the same thing, but I would never say that like we're on the phone. I wouldn't like like I'm on the way back. Like, okay, see you in a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's weird to think because like all these different platforms that we have to communicate, it's yeah. like. Like, there are, like, little nuances in how we actually communicate. Mm-hmm. There's, like, a base core, but then, uh, like, even, like, a podcast versus, like, if we were talking, right? Like, uh, say me and you were sitting around watching TV. Like, we're, yeah. are, we're probably going to talk differently and, and, I don't know, it's just different. We're probably going to communicate a little bit differently yeah. than we would, like, sitting there watching TV. But we're still, like, a, I don't know, like, face to face. Do, do you think it's more of, like, a percentage kind of thing? So, like, let's say, for example, if you're if you're trying to ex- explain... Uh, this false duality, right? So to make the two inseparable and we're trying to explain the reasoning behind why your behavior was this way and maybe it's primarily attributed to uh, nature, but there's also – I mean there's inevitably going to be an element of nurture as well because that's going – that that stimuli from your external conditioning and external environment is going to inevitably play into upon your, your behavior, decision-making, whatever – uh, so maybe it's like 90% nature, but then it, it's also like 10%, uh, this, like it's inescapable to say that it's one or the other. And that's where that kind of reconciles the false duality of the two of nature versus nurture. So, okay. So I don't know if, if I'm, ca- I might be contradicting myself here, but I, I just like to think that your genes are like, it, it's, it's like a historical issue, right? Your genes are the predication of your, like, you know, like your nature is going to be like what happens before your nurture right okay. so they're both going to inform you know what i mean like equally and like you know maybe 
like, and I don't know that your brain necessarily works like this, but you know, it seems like developmental psychologists like say that it does like, you know, you'll have a, a kid will be like prone to rage. Right. And it's like, that could just be like a genetic thing. Right. Where like mm-hmm. his brain is producing extra rage signals or uh-huh. whatever. Right. To More adrenaline or, or like there's other people will be like, Oh no, he just like, hasn't been properly like conditioned to deal with anger in a way that's like, that's socially acceptable. Right. So like, if you're early childhood, whatever, and, and we can't we can't distinguish between the two, but we're still trying to like figure out like how that works. But like, like okay, we open at noon, and we'll have so many guys come in like right as the door opens up at noon. They hurry up, like go get a steak, see their titties, and like go back to like work. Interesting. Okay. Or we'll have guys like that are work. in there for lunch break. They'll get lap dances and stuff, but it's like during the daytime, it's less suspicious to like their wives and stuff. Like they don't really know them. Oh, yeah. a lot of people in there do have like relationship problems like a lot of older men i'm like i don't know either like their wife has passed away or you know it's just not they're there going anymore. through a divorce or they're or looking to add a third you'd yeah. be surprised by the amount of couples the that amount go in. of people looking for a third or just looking to spice up their marriage i see people like, like they around your age like couples it. that just like want like a couple lap dance they want you to dance on her boyfriend it's so and much you. fun and yeah. some of the really? like, couple lap dances are so much fun yeah because you can see them both having couples. fun and it's just you know mm-hmm. i don't know because you're like hey i'm adding to their relationship Literally. right now like yeah I, what I do right now, they're going to walk away with it and they're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah. Literally. And they'll Fuck be thinking yeah. about coming back later. <laughs> they'll be moaning my name later. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll see some that's guys awesome. that's coming in, they're taking off the ring, they're like hiding it. And I was like, dude, if you're a cool guy, you'd bring your girl to the strip club. Like, you know, like. She women wants to love see titties women too. Just, yeah, women love women just as much as you do, probably. If not more. Yeah. The it's women are probably my favorite customers that come in because they're just like in awe. They're, they're like, like frisky usually. and funky, and I feel like they're just always yeah. full of energy. They're usually the most handsiest, though. Like, oh, I haven't yeah. had to tell anyone to, like, hey, you got to chill out more than I have had a woman because they just think since they're a girl, they can get away with anything. And totally. you have a girl, like, come up, slap your ass, and it's like, listen, you can't do that. <laughs> it's like, because if you do it, he'll do it. And yeah. that's not good. It's like they're living the life of a guy for, like, the first time. They're yeah. just like, oh, look, look. Yeah, literally. That's funny. <laughs> you said a lot of these places that you've done food challenges at have uh, gone out of business as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the big things is I always kind of say that my record will never be broken as far as having 716 wins. And that's not just being arrogant. It's more of a, of a knowledge, being knowledgeable about how everything works is that Man vs. Food started this food challenge craze back in 2008 to 2011, which is really, I started in 2010. I did my first one on March 19th, so you're early 2010. On the trend. Yes. So all the restaurants doing food challenges were open when I started. Uh-huh. Most of those restaurants are gone now. Like of my 716 wins, I would say that only about 300, if that, I, I don't really think it's 300. Less than half. I, yes. Wow. Yeah, maybe 300 of those are still available where you could go over and, and still do it. Wow. So for somebody to try to break that record, the people that are like second, third, and fourth are pretty much died down nowadays as far as they're not doing many challenges or competitions. So for like you to just start right now and say, hey, I'm going to beat Randy's record, uh-huh. almost impossible. Wow. You'd have to really work for it. Uh-huh. And also, since 2015, I've had completely different motives than competitive eating. So at some point, you would probably just stop because you'd finally realize, hey, there, what's the purpose of me doing this? The hero that takes on uncertainty without fear, like mm. with courage. And mm. that's like that's a very appealing archetype to human beings. Interesting. That's, yeah, the whole concept of bravery. Mm. Very interesting. Because I, I, maybe, maybe we like seeing this in ourselves. Or, yeah, yeah I was going to say maybe... You you basically went exactly where I was about to go. Like maybe it's it's fulfilling to ourselves in certain ways because it's it's you know something we'd like to see in ourselves. So when um, or or something that you would like to think that you would do. So when you see that, it, it's uh, it's gratification in a sense. It's 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 like the human innate predisposition to gratification mm-hmm. and also. Uh, just admiration. It's yeah. it's like we admiration want to and admire. Praise. 
Like yeah. even even those that we admire admire somebody else, hypothetically speaking. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Even that is that is a really interesting jump. Even those at you know that you would consider to be the top, the top of the top, the very best, the very greatest, the most successful, whatever it may be, they have someone else that they think is the top of the top and mm. the very greatest. That's such that's such a crazy thought. That is. It's also it's really empowering too. It's like yeah, it's like dude. I know you look up to that person, but they they look up to somebody else, mm-hmm. and that person before them probably looked up to somebody else. Yeah, it kind of goes back to take on that responsibility to go out into life and try to be an example. That's something to yeah. strive for. That's, Absolutely, that's a cool thought. That's a that cool is, thought. That is that is. Uh, I feel like that's a very empowering thought, regardless of what level you're at so to speak absolutely absolutely no i actually went in, uh to tyson's chicken plant at one point for a no class. way yeah. really i had to come back before sem- this semester started and had a one-week class that counted as two credits but we went to like all these different companies just for agriculture absolutely and uh but i went and viewed their chicken plant and that honestly was one of the grossest experience i had it wasn't like messy or anything but i've just never seen like that many dead chickens in my life and they're all just like going around on a rack you know oh wow yeah what are your what are your thoughts on like the just the mass producing meat and whatnot? You got to do it because I mean there's so many people in the world, you know. Mm-hmm. Honestly, we're getting ready to run into like a food crisis in like 2050 cuz like if you heard about like the population that's going to just double or triple whatever it's going to do. That's crazy. And more yeah. people are getting out of poverty. Yeah, exactly. So then they're going to start eating more meat as well. No, yeah, chicken chicken's probably the easiest animal to produce for sure. Like, really? You th- I think it's like 13 pounds. Um, don't quote me on this because I don't know if I'm right, but it's like 13 pounds of food is how long it takes for a chicken to like get to full size before you like slaughter it. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, how, how long like time wise? Oh, I think they only it's like 12 weeks or something like that. Like pretty. That's quick. it. Yeah, pretty quick. Wow. Yeah, they just get them real big and they just send them off to slaughter. Are they yeah. bad for the environment? Because I I know like uh... I've heard that before. Honestly, I don't know though. I feel oh, really? Like, I, I feel like nowadays. Everything like chickens, especially like I learned this like in school, that everything's vertically integrated. So Tyson yeah. owns probably all the chicken plants in like southeast like Arkansas or northeast Arkansas, whatever it is. But yeah, like all the ones there, they own them all. They're all Tyson Farms. Like a farmer will own it, but Tyson's the one that gives them the guidelines and regulations. Okay. And, yeah, and especially like nowadays too, probably with like PETA and stuff like that that are constantly like saying bad things. Um, they have to have like a certain way they do, it, especially like waste and stuff like that. So it doesn't affect the environment. A lot of like regulations. Yeah, and exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's very much like in like almost like a factory or just a barn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure they have like a something. Yeah, with the waste that comes out, it goes in the floor and then gets shipped out somewhere else. Okay, absolutely. I, the myth of Sisyphus basically like this guy gets sentenced to like push a rock up a hill and then it like rolls down like every like. This he, is like, Greek mythology. He yeah, he just okay, pushes absolutely. a rock up the hill and then eventually he gets to the top and then it rolls down and he has to walk it down to get it. And so he like describes this like this like meditative experience of like being sisyphus and like you have to push the rock up the hill and it's so hard and you're like going up the hill and it's like again like it's so fucking hard and mind-blowing and like, struggle struggle yeah, struggle exactly and it's it's ridiculous and like that life is like that right like there's stuff like there's stuff when you have to like work you know like it could be like really painful or whatever when you do something college is like that do. for me right now exactly. it's like I, i'm struggling struggling slaving away and then this end destination the top of the hill and like you know all you can see really is like the rock in front of you uh-huh. right and like maybe the sky a little bit but you're not really appreciating that because you're trying to push the rock so and the you rock get to the top, being a metaphor for the moment sure the temporary kind of, struggle sure sure whatever the struggle is yeah and then so you get to the top and it rolls down and like you're at the top of this hill now at the top of this mountain or whatever and you can see like for miles in front of you and it's like beautiful right mm. and it's like like, again, like, it's crazy because it's just, like, you use your imagination here and imagine being on top of a fucking hill and, like, the dopamine – like, immediately it's, like, a dopamine surge. Like, your, your brain's like, yes, this is beautiful. Beauty, baby. Got to love it. And so so Sisyphus, at this point, the rock's fucking rolling down the hill, and he knows he's going to have to do it again. But he just drinks in, like, slowly walking down the hill, just drink in the beauty of it, right? Like, before, like, having to resume, like, the crap. So, uh-huh. like – to me that's just really powerful because again like if you're looking for beauty if you're trying to appreciate stuff like around you like that's just that's that's going to be better than being like fuck everything i guess uh-huh. right or like you know like i don't know i've been in like dark mindsets before where like every, you know just even like on an overcast day sometimes it's hard to like have like a a positive outlook on life uh-huh. but if you just view everything as absurd 
Like, everything's just silly, right? If I go get in a car accident right now and, like, told on my fucking, like, super, like, stupid car that I can barely afford, mm-hmm. like... Am I gonna be sad about that, or can I just laugh it off and be like, "Yeah, at least I'm alive." Like, <laughs> yeah, like. You so know. it's it, absurdism like is almost like a positive interpretation of nihilism. Instead of saying like "fuck this, nothing matters," it's like "nothing matters." Therefore, this is funny. Don't take this is, too seriously. Right. So like, it's Buddhist. It's uh, oh, similar did, to the Joker as well. Like, uh, why so serious? You know, like why so serious? Yeah, <laughs> it's the same similar, similar stuff. Dude, like, I'm totally because I I've. I've like kind of made the argument just like within my own head. I've never actually discussed this with anybody, but I've, I'm like, why is nihilism like so incredibly terrible? I feel like that's just one response of the outlook of nothing matters. It's like it's like nothing matters. So fuck the world, fuck me, fuck my parents, fuck everybody. Mm-hmm. Like nothing matters. And then there's the other response, which is more correlated uh, or more of like a, uh, I, I guess attributed to absurdism uh, from based on what it sounds like is nothing really matters or nothing's to be taken that seriously. So like be able to laugh it off, even when things seem like so non-trivial and so just uh, fundamentally just disempowering and and lifeless. Like it just kind of drains the life out of you, drains the meaning out of you. So that the absurdism is kind of empowering that perspective and the aspect that, Hey, this, this doesn't matter too much. It's all temporary. Don't take it too seriously. Well, and so I think, like, it's helpful to contextualize it to, uh, like, the time where, like, like philosophy now, like, uh, I feel like there's been a lot of, like, new age stuff, you know? I mean, Christianity is flourished and, like, branched out. And, like, there's all these ideologies, right? They're going to uh-huh. tell you the meaning behind your life, right? Like, everything happens for a reason no. right? and stuff like that. And Nietzsche would be like, that's not true. Like, there is no meaning, right? That's nihilism, literally. It's not that everything happens for a reason. God didn't, like, invent the bubonic plague plague to kill a bunch of people, like, for a good reason, right? Like, all these people dying, like, you know, you'd say, oh, they're in a better place now. Like, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, that is, there's no evidence of that, right? So. Which, it's so, it's so. It's a lie. It's so pleasing for us to throw our projections of that and be able to to project some form of meaning on there because it gives us some form of uh i guess internal sanity the or... mean dude the meaning behind it right it's re- it makes you feel better right like that's uh, the thing and so nietzsche claims that it's better it would be better to have some truth right you're, uh, you're gonna be better off with the truth and feeling good about what's true than feeling good about something that's just made up right so it's like instead of living in some form of a fantasy land well kind of kind of and like my favorite song in the world and it'll never change is part in the usa by Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I've got it on my... I've had the same MP3 player since 2011. And Miley Cyrus is on there three times to make sure it's always playing. And then my favorite singer is Kesha. She doesn't put out enough music these days for my taste. Uh-huh. But I understand the situation she's in. But uh, there's like four or five Kesha songs on there. And then Rihanna, Eminem. I'm a big Avril Lavigne fan. Okay. So I've got all this like ump up party kind of music. That just kind of gets me in like a dancing rhythm and that transitions me or helps me, influences me to to want to eat more. I like, would not have guessed that. Oh, yeah. No. I would not have People think that. I'm like listening to heavy metal or That's some That's what shit. I was like, – we were yeah, talking yeah, yeah, last yeah. night. We were kind of speculating. Like I, I had a group of friends over and we were all watching your videos. And they're like, what do you think he's listening to? And somebody's like probably heavy metal or like some hardcore rap. Yeah, it, what music I'm listening to. Levine. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, my dream concert it would be Avril Lavigne. No way. Yeah, or, or like if Ed Sheeran, Taylor Swift, and Avril Lavigne all played a concert together, I would literally pay a thousand bucks for the ticket without even thinking. No twice. way. 